Um, no one will be comfortable talking to me today. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Backstory to this varies, unbelievable. Okay, because I was I was assuming you wouldn't uh, state the right question, and I was going to have to offer up um, as a gift to your diligence. Just the Jalen Phillips will be off pup today. Waiting. Um, what does that mean? I don't know, Barry. It means that he's gonna he's gonna be practicing with his guys. Really excited for him because um, if you haven't noticed, he's um, one of the most involved um, players through the off season program, uh, and he he hasn't taken a snap yet. So excited for him. Um, and that was the news I was ready to break. Um, I don't expect to see. Um, uh, Odell this week, um, but I would put it in the week to week category after that. So, um, you know, I'm just feeling really open. So I'm just throwing that information out. Yeah, it was uncomfortable. Um, and, uh, and so he's going to be uh, um, with the uh, train staff today. Uh, I think he will, uh, he will be working his way back. When do I expect? Um, I don't expect it in the next couple practices. Um, beyond that is really hard for me to forecast. Um, you know, just uh, I expect to see um, a couple. There, there are some guys that haven't been practicing that I expect, um, and which will help the help the depth um, f for that position. You know, I think um, I expect to see. Uh, you know, in in what what amount that will vary depending on how their body feels through stretch and, and warm up and stuff. But I expect to see a little bit um, of Braxton here soon and uh, expect to see Eric Uzukama today. Well, absolutely. The, um, those things are monumental. It's cool that um, Mike said that because that's, uh, you know, what we're talking to uh, each quarterback. You know, you're in a competition that is inherently within the game, you know, a little different. You're working with different players, different por portions of the game, like Mike alluded to. Um, and so there, you may not um, – and, and just knowing that from a coach's perspective, you know, very clear with the quarterbacks that there's various things that you're looking for when, when someone – is uh, in those type of situations in a close competition, but with different control variables. Um, how you handle yourself, how you add value to um, players, how you, uh, you can tell by the coordination of an offense, the conviction and confidence of a quarterback, um, simply by how players exit the huddle. It's the, uh, when I say we evaluate everything, it's literally um, that, that deep, um, of a dive because you're you're responsible for conveying the initial conviction of every play with every play call, and then your assertiveness and your how how you emphasize different words in a, in a huddle call, that can bring clarity and conviction to just how people approach the line of scrimmage, and can you do that while also um, juggling a hey. Um, make sure you tell your tell the Z um, to run a high corner because he doesn't know what that is. You know, yeah. like things like that happens in preseason games, um, and 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 all of it is you you, t you take that in, into account so you can uh, make sure that you present uh, those types of challenges, the the equivalent challenges to um, you know both quarterbacks. Skyler has the same op opportunity. In, in that way, and we can assess from there. Oh, I mean, there's – who says we have to stop at two? <laughs> maybe maybe we can just have four. Um, no, I think uh, you, you, you have to let the players determine um, who gets the ball and how frequently and how much they're in the game, and that's very important. I think the, the cool thing, when you have a – uh, position group that on the front end you know by NFL standards is, uh, is, is very, very talented, one of the most 
if not the most talented of, um, you know, that, that you can remember or, or you've been on teams with, you don't worry about how that is going to unfold. You let it unfold, uh, and, and it's always very obvious. You can tell um, by uh, how people uh, execute their, their blocks and their belief of, um, uh, of the player carrying the ball, and uh, you, you have to be able to be open-minded to how it plays out. So I think, you know, the residuals of a deep room um, you can see on each individual player. Uh, I'm seeing, for instance, um, you know, some of uh, Jeff Wilson's best uh, ball that he's that I've seen him play. Um, I've, you know, worked him out as an uh, as a player in um, North Texas back in 2018, uh, and and some of his best stuff has been um, in this camp, uh, and I can't help but attribute that to the to the overall talent of the entire room so it's it's something that you're just you just keep coaching you keep seeing how much guys games can develop you don't um you don't put a ceiling on that because guys uh will continue to surprise you in a positive manner if you let them and uh we just know that it's a uh a strength of ours can be um, handing the ball off to um, some uh, pretty good backs, and we, we just go from there. So, uh, Pat's it, it's been cool to watch Pat develop uh, in non-padded situations because you, you got to see a player uh, directly take uh, technique training and drill work and apply it, um, in, you know, in his game and – evolve his game from the first day we saw him talking about breaking uh you know being in a pedal and and breaking at a d direct angle towards um towards a eligible um as opposed to rounding out of it those little things i've seen him develop and then i think the team got to see him uh tackle and that that's a uh what we we thought we'd be happy happy with it but um, you never know until you get to see s someone with the pads on in, in a tackle situation, and that part of his game is is live and active. So it's been cool to watch him uh, uh, really take some extreme. Uh, he's taking advantage of the opportunity. The opportunity is that he has a room um, headed by you know Javon and Poyer that have an immense amount of knowledge. You have a you have um, you know Elijah Campbell's really going after it. Nick Needham's getting in there. Sometimes Marcus May has done a lot of stuff in this in this league, and all of those factors he's taking advantage of. So um, he's in charge of how far that goes, and 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 what he's able to do on this team as a rookie. But um, what, what I do know is he's taking full advantage of his ops, and his game continues to to grow in it, it has to as a rookie. You you have to, uh, it's very, very hard to contribute as a rookie in the National Football League. And, and the rookie years, um, uh, not built for everyone to excel um, during. So it takes a, a special commitment and so far so good with him. Uh, we'll see what this week and this practice has in store for us from him. No, I think uh, the overall, I think there there was um, several uh, technique principles that we we've really taken a look at how we articulate and coach them and emphasize them, and so one of those being you know the line of scrimmage. And when I was happy happy with uh, you know at times during the game and particularly in the in the group that uh, Patrick was playing with, I saw the line of scrimmage be reset, uh, and that and that is something that. Uh, we work diligently at. We've, we've tried to kind of reframe how we articulate it to to engender better results. Um, and I think overall, there's uh, I, I you, you get to learn a lot about your overall team and where they're at by some of the the set, uh, twos and threes 
and where their game's at because it's almost like a baseline of what is your, your, your starting point, where your game's at, and what has clicked for, for the group. And to see the, the line of scrimmage reset at times, um, that was very encouraging. And then, uh, you know, I think there was some communication stuff that we'll always uh, be working on so we can have conviction and um, unity when, whenever we're uh, executing whatever phase. But I, I saw the, the line of scrimmage was um, a, a, a big positive coming out of that game um, with, the, with the younger guys in particular uh, really gravitating to, towards their new technique and fundamentals, that being the first time that in a competitive situation, in, in game-like situation, they were able to execute those fundamentals. You know, um, it's going to give some ops to some guys uh, that, you know, Keon is a guy that, that, that was a hard, they're all, it's always really, really hard to, in real time, watch a, a, a player really digest the reality of a season ending injury because I, I don't think enough is kind of like, or people don't really think of it this way, but you have all these objectives and this, and this forecasting that's built up just like coverage for the National Football League is built up for months. And then all of a sudden, boom, wow, it's all different. So for, for Keon, who's really been bold in how he's gone after um, uh, his job and he's developed his, um, since we've been here um, as much as anyone, one of, one of our favorite guys to coach, it, that, that was tough. That was tough. Um, I, I think there are, there are some real strong battles going on um, on the offensive line that, you know, what, what does this do? Well, it, it forces guys to kind of clear those battles up, um, give some opportunities. Fortunately, we, we um, I don't know how many NFL offensive linemen we have, but it's more than uh, you're able to keep on a roster. So that's, that's the good news is um, that there will be guys that will get ops and have to step their game up because Keon uh, is, is somebody that we've uh, learned to rely upon more and more, and uh, that, that's somebody's got to step up in this place and um, who that's going to be. They'll have the first opportunity to tell me today. That, uh, for me, what I got to learn about Jalen Phillips is that he's a, he's a very uh, capable, strong learner because this, is a, this was a test of internal fortitude coming at, you know, for, for Jalen, his game, he's, he's always been an impact player, but he was right when he got injured, he was kind of, um, there was momentum swinging in a positive regard towards his conviction of how to play his position. He was feeling a different level of uh, confidence. And then for a guy that has ambitions as he, as he does, he, he wants to be great in the worst way. It is a long vision challenge to to attack this injury appropriately and not something that by nature is totally his speed he he wants to fix the issue and go play so to watch him um, diligently go about the process and I thought he was going to be a number one violator of of you know secretly overdoing what he was supposed to do uh, to be patient and to have the vision for his um, teammates, really, and what, you know, we're all relying upon him coming back and him being able to um, uh, first uh, find his footing from a health perspective and then be able to contribute to this team. Uh, I've been very proud of how he's, how he's attacked that. Um, and while doing so, doing things that leaders do, which is you, you, you feel his presence as a teammate, um, 
you know i think uh even when he's not playing um he he definitely took note um both him and bradley um did of how jalen ramsey attacked his injury last year and, and as a result he's he's already impacted the 2024 dolphins before he set on on the field so excited for him to uh go to the next stage um and and um, we'll see how his body responds with that. Well, well, to me, the the ultimate focus for our team is as rudimentary as what do we want our football to look like? What, how do we want it to feel? How do we how do we want to approach our technique and fundamentals? And so, built around that is how do we get players. Um, adept at the system, adept at the techniques, um, while also with the long vision of the season. And so for me, it's really prioritizing how, when we go, we recreate game-like enthusiasm, focus, attention to detail. Um, that, to me, is how you create and build and maintain your standard. Within all of those moving parts, you have to develop a trust um, uh, with, from, from, my, from my perspective, comes from wise, but you have to be, develop a trust with your, with your locker room that they, we won't ever um, shortchange the, the way we go about full speed stuff, but we have to, dive into the science, we have to follow trends, and we have to adjust our rep counts accordingly so that we don't um, do either end of the spectrum, not prepare guys or over overwork guys. So that whole thing, um, to me, uh, if you have one, uh, one group of people moving in the right direction or in one direction and you explain your whys with diligence, um, and and get the appropriate buy-in from the locker room. You can go out and we can get infinite amount of game reps more than our opponents. That's kind of how 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 I look at things. So it is a um, balancing act for sure, which is why I have a hard time absoluting stuff and how things kind of change uh, to a certain degree each and every training camp because you have a different problem to solve. And then what happens if you have too many players that need management and then you overwork? We, well, you can't do as many reps. You know, it's, it's um, ever evolving. Um, I think, you know, case in point, the practice today, um, you know, with, with various um, constraints at s certain specific positions, we had to front load the front load with our full speed reps, and we kind of have to have a in between um, walk through and live practice jog through at the tail end of it. That's something that you guys aren't used to me totally seeing all the time, um, but that's an adjustment to protect the way we train our fundamentals and technique. Which, um, if you want to be a good football team or the best football team or um, anything um, that fall, f falls in the, in the bucket of where we're trying to go, you have to um, train those uh, much like, um, you know, I was talking to the team today about Steph Curry. Um, got a chance to talk, to talk to him this off season and he talked about um, every time he shoots, his focus is the same um, on the front of the rim is in games. Well, then you can do some elite stuff, but it comes back to his practice and preparation for those moments or why he can do things that no one else can. So that approach, which makes it impossible to kind of forecast um, exactly how things will play out uh, because you, you always have to attend to all the, I mean, you want to talk about there's a lot of variables. There are a ton of variables, but um, you, you just do your absolute best with all the 
all the controllables that you can control and then um, communicate that amongst your team so everyone knows why you're doing everything you're doing. Uh, well, I was at the Orlando Four Seasons visiting Disney. Um, and the, they were, I think uh, Golden State was on a road trip to play the Orlando Magic. And, uh, and I, I ended up talking to him a little bit. My wife got a picture of us having a conversation. I think he, he got a picture of us, but I was too rattled to ask for his phone number. So um, if he's listening to this press conference, I would love, I'd love that um, to get that picture. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I was, I was, uh, he, he's, he's the, he's the extreme version of everything I believe in, in training for athletics. So when, when you bump into a guy and you have maybe five to 10 minutes, I don't even know what I said. I just rattle off a bunch of stuff and remembered what he, what he talked about focus. Um, well, that, that goes to something that happens to me on routine. So I, he, he did know who I was, which made no sense. <laughs> Much like every person in public that, um, you know, people identify me a lot and it never gets normal. Um, it's always, maybe I'm delusional, I don't know, I just don't ever expect it, so. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Denial. It's cool, it is really cool to see him um, doing what we, you know, everybody that has worked with him has always known that he would be uh, elite at. So it was fun. Um, and it would have been more fun if he would have failed at his challenge. Um, unfortunately, he didn't. Thank you.